It all depends upon how we entertain those silent whisperings that come from we know not where. We cannot hear them with mortal ear, but from the silence they come as if they were dreams, not to you or me alone, but to everyone. In this way the grandest thoughts come to us, to use or abuse. So search not in treasured volumes for noble thoughts, but within, and bright and glowing vision will come to be realized now and hereafter. You must give some hours to concentrated, consistent, persistent thought. You must study yourself and your weaknesses. No man gets over a fence by wishing himself on the other side. He must climb. No man gets out of the rut of dull, tiresome, monotonous life by merely wishing himself out of the rut. He must climb. If you are standing still or going backward, there is something wrong. You are the man to find out what is wrong. Don't think that you are neglected or not understood or not appreciated. Such thoughts are the thoughts of failure. Think hard about the fact that men who have got what you envy got it by working for it. Don't pity yourself, criticize yourself. You know that the only thing in the world that you have got to count upon is yourself. Lesson 18 Mental Control Through Creation I attended a banquet of inventors recently. Each inventor gave a short talk on something he thought would be accomplished in the future. Many very much needed things were spoken of. One inventor spoke of the possibilities of wireless telephone. Distance, he said, would shortly be annihilated. He thought we would soon be able to talk to the man in the submarine 40 fathoms below the surface and a thousand miles away. When he got through, he asked if there were any that doubted what he said. No one spoke up. This was not a case of tactful politeness, as inventors like to argue, but a case where no one present really doubted that the inventor's vision would, in the future, materialize. These shrewd men, some real geniuses, all thought we would in time be able to talk to those a thousand miles away without media. Now if we can make an instrument so wonderful that we can send wireless messages a thousand miles, is there any reason why we should not, through mental control, transmit messages from one person to another? The wireless message should not be as easy to send as the projected thought. The day will come when all business will employ highly developed persons to send out influences. These influences will be so dominating that employees will be partly controlled by them, and so you will profit more and more by your mental powers and depend on them to draw you to all forces of a helping nature. You will be constantly sending out suggestions to your employees and friends. They will receive these unconsciously, but in case yours is the stronger personality, they will carry them out the same as if you had spoken them. This is being done even today. A finely organized company secures the combined effort of all its men. They may be each doing a different kind of work, but all work to bring about the very best results. The whole atmosphere is impregnated with a high standard of workmanship. Everyone feels he must do his best. He could not be in such surroundings and be satisfied to do anything but his best work. A business will exceed only to the extent that the efforts of all are coordinated toward one result. At least one person is needed to direct all toward the desired end. The person at the head does not have to exactly outline to the others what steps to take, but he must possess the mental power of control over others. An up-to-date business letter is not written in a casual, commonplace way today. The writer tries to convey something he thinks the receiver will be interested to know. In this way, he awakens a responsive spirit. Sometimes just the addition of a word or two will change a letter of the matter-of-fact style to one that compels a response. It is not always what is actually in a letter, but the spirit which it breathes that brings the results. That intangible something that defies analysis is the projected thought of the matter that brings back the harvest that it claims. 
but we should not always claim success for ourselves only. If you are anxious that some friend or relative should succeed, think of this person as becoming successful. Picture him in the position you would like to see him in. If he has a weakness, desire and command that it be strengthened. Think of his shortcomings, which belong to his negative nature, as being replaced by positive qualities. Take a certain part of the day to send him thoughts of upbuilding nature. You can in this way arouse his mental powers.